And so that's why we we came to you guys because you're providing us leverage on time that it, it's it's like sudden new time travel. It's it's a whole different tool. Um, it's not going to make me look any younger, but it, <laughs> it, it's going to allow me to have more time flexibility that I can't create on my own. I want to I want to ask one last thought on 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 something with the deferred sales trust as it pertains to the estate tax and just estate tax in general because we kind of touched on the stepped up basis which is really really a neat part about the 1031 it maintains a stepped up basis and your kids you know can could if they inherit it correctly they can receive a stepped up basis and still and walk away tax free however it doesn't take it out of the estate tax right you're still if someone's worth 50 million dollars and all 50 million is inside of the taxable estate right? They may get a stepped up basis to 50, but they're going to pay 40% on whatever the above and beyond the exclusion, which is 22 million married about right now and about 12 million single um, set to expire in 2025. You're looking at 12 million married, probably about 6 million single. The deferred sales trust, on the other hand, you can take it all outside the taxable estate. So a lot of my clients, before they find us, um, they're, they're doing some gifting. They're doing some family limited partnerships. They're doing some, some um, you know, maybe some life insurance to offset of it, off, offset some of that but they haven't been able to take it all out because they can't get it out fast enough. Whereas the deferred sales trust in one single deal, one transaction, one day, not only can you sell, let's say that $30 million asset, but move it outside your taxable estate. Talk to us a little bit about maybe either estate taxes you've had or, or, or challenges that you're looking at or potential friends and family that you know of and what that would mean um, if indeed what I just said, all, all can be done. Yeah, so I'll give you an example that I dealt with with somebody that was co-investing with us. They they were they were putting in some money, and their biggest fear was how am I going to transfer my assets to my kids? And he was trying to shelter about five million dollars that he wanted to transfer, and it was very very specific. And right now that wouldn't be a problem, but it could become a problem if your underlying basis is high. So if you, if you right now, if you got 20, $30 million, um, you know, over 22 million, you, you could have a problem. And he particularly had $5 million that he was trying to shelter because he owned a very large company. Um, and there was about $5 million that he was going to have to pay. And he's older, he's in his eighties and, and, you know, he, he was worried about it. And so he had gotten life insurance policy that was costing him $15,000 a year to shelter that $5 million. And at that point, you know, I was looking at him, I was like, look, you're paying $15,000 every year and it's going to keep going up. You're in your 80s. 81, you're going to be paying 20,000. 82, you're going to be paying 25,000 because the life insurance company knows you're not going to live forever. And they're going to keep charging you more and more and more. And even though you have this incredible plan, it's still going to cost you a fortune. Um, why not eliminate it and come up with an alternative tool? And before I had learned about DSTs, we were trying to figure out different ways for him to creatively do it, put it into trust, do it into family trust, and, and to, to do it in other ways. So after I found out about DSTs, I was like, look, you could have a one clean swoop and get all of this out and not worry about it. Why wouldn't you do it that way? And, and so that's, that, that was the conversation that we ended up having is why pay an annualized fee of fifteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000 when you could make a clean swoop of it and get it out and not have to worry about it. And yep. you could add more money to it later. Yep. Yep. So well said. And also too, the other thing that a lot of folks may overlook is within six months of the estate passing the assets, the assets must be sold or refinanced. The, the tax must be paid. And so the the timing thing comes back into case. Who knows by the time you pass and your state passes if the value is going to be high or low, or if your kids are going to know you know, have the sophistication to be able to negotiate properly to sell well or to refinance well and to pull the cash out. But within six months, whatever that amount, that 40% must be paid. So why not just eliminate all of that headache now, sell the assets prior to move them outside the taxable estate. And also full disclosure, you do not, you do forego the stepped up basis when you do that with the deferred sales trust. That's full disclosure. However, your kids can step into your shoes and then continue to just receive those payments and keep it in the deferred sales trust corpus, right? And so they're, they're but at the same time, they got a brand new depreciation schedule. So there's a number of ways to, to look at this, right? And that's why we have capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. You can go to and get a free consultation to learn more about this, talk with the tax attorneys and myself to kind of help guide you to see if it's a good fit also we don't charge and listen if you do the deal so that being said uh Gripe, any last thoughts on that before the lightning round 
No, I, I think that, you know, it, the, the key thing is what you guys do is provide time. You provide time that you can't get on your own. And I think that time is more valuable than money. I, I can make and break money, but I can't make time. And so I have to rely on other people's leverage to get that time. And so that's why we, we came to you guys, because you're providing us leverage on time. That it, it's, it's like sudden new time travel. It's, it's a whole different tool. Um, it's not going to make me look any younger, but it, <laughs> it, it's going to allow me to have more time flexibility that I can't create on my own. Thank you. I couldn't say it better myself. Thank you so much for sharing that. All right. You're getting started here just a second here. Jake. Hmm. All right. Hey, and welcome, everybody. This is Brett Swartz. We are live streaming on a few different channels. In fact, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, as well as uh, Clubhouse as well. And I'm trying to get Jake Miller into my room in Clubhouse, see if he can come on in. And we're here to talk all things deferred sales trust, cryptocurrency, and uh, ways to create and preserve more wealth and kind of demystify the deferred sales trust which is um, a great way to create and preserve more wealth when selling highly appreciated assets. I'm here with my co-host, Jake Muller, financial advisor, specialist on training and helping advisors grow their business as well as CPAs and having his own practice as well. Jake Muller, how are you doing today? Doing great. It's a wonderful day. Actually calling in from Mexico, from Mazatlan, Mexico. It's a great place to call in from. And uh, I, uh, I have not been there before. And I just sent you um, uh, a, a, I just invited you. She should get the invite there. Let's see if you can come on in um, to the clubhouse. So cool. That, and then the, um, I'm thinking the, the, the area there in Mexico, how is the weather versus the humidity in, um, in some place like uh, Utah? Well, you want to unmute real fast. You want to unmute the that one there and see what happens. See if that's going to work well with uh, Okay, how about this? Yeah, okay. sure. All right. Can you hear me on both channels? So I was just talking about how in Utah, it was 140 degrees yesterday. But here in Mazatlan, it was only 88. 88, but with substantial humidity. Felt wonderful for me. A lot of the locals here are sweating like crazy. But... Uh, for, for me, it was it was good. And you can see that it's doing a funny little thing to my hair. Um, out, outside of that, life life is normal. I love it. Your hair's looking really, really lush today. I, I, I like the hair. So it reminds me of a movie called Coming to America where they talked about So Glow. You ever see that movie, Jake? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a classic for sure. <laughs> All right. So let's dive right into today's topic. We're talking... Um, or our, our vision for, for the deferred sales trust with cryptocurrency. So what we're seeing is a high amount of wealth being created in cryptocurrency, real estate, and businesses. And what people are struggling with is capital gains tax when they go to sell it. And so using the deferred sales trust, uh, we believe is one of the best ways to not only defer the tax, but then to be able to diversify into multiple asset classes, such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, a new business venture, and essentially um, lower your overall risk by diversifying in time of the market, not time in the market, in the beginning of this, of this uh, particular, um, uh, mastermind. And if you're not seeing it or hearing it now, you can go back on YouTube to see the full version. We actually spoke with the gentleman named Dr. Kapreet Prada, and this guy has owned and managed real estate for over 30 years, commercial real estate expert. And he talks about how the deferred sales trust is like a time machine in that you can leverage the trust to extend the time period of which um, you can earn interest on funds that you would have paid to the government. Now, unlike an IRA or a 401k, it's a great way to create time flexibility and uh, that timing is everything when it comes to to purchasing assets um, at a discount. And so um, that being said, we're going to cover our deal store close of the week. We're going to give our, our, our deferred sales trip crypto update as well. Um, <clears throat> and if you remember last week, we announced the first official deferred sales trust has been closed inside of 
the uh, the trust, and this is a big deal. And we do have Ethereum that is going higher. I think it was 2,600 yesterday, and uh, clients are getting excited because they have some some they have some um, some target rates to to execute on larger amounts into the trust. So let's start, Jake, with the first deal close story of the week. And this is for a gentleman. Um, hey, Pierce, welcome. This is for a gentleman um, who was looking at um, a Delaware statutory trust as well as a traditional 1031 exchange. His biggest challenge was he had a big mortgage over basis. So he sold a biz he sold his pr property for about $3 million. His basis... Um, was somewhere around 300,000 or so. His liability or his debt was somewhere around 1.3 million. So he had about an $800,000 mortgage over basis. He lives in the city, he develops properties, he syndicates deals, he's a commercial real estate expert. He's been there for 30 years. And I actually met with him two years ago in person. Um, this is this is uh, one of the cold calls that I made. I set a meeting, drove to the city, sat down with them. He looked at me and said, Brett, this sounds crazy. Like, I, I, really? I haven't heard of this. I don't know anything about this. How does this work? And over the next two years of education, of, of, of phone calls with CPAs, with uh, his, his, uh, his, he brought <laughs> partners in to look at this thing. He finally calls me and he calls me two weeks ago. And he's like, Brett, I've got basically 14 days before my day 180, which today is his day 180, to close on this. And I've got to solve my mortgage over basis, which he was able to do with a Delaware statutory trust, which is really cool, um, which would, takes the debt. It's a high LTV deal. And for those who are wondering, well, what's why do the Delaware, not just the Deferred Sales Trust? Well, the Deferred Sales Trust doesn't allow mortgage over basis to be deferred. And so what we had to do, what we needed to solve for, is replacing that debt over basis, which in his scenario is about 800,000, with a what's called a bifractured 1031 exchange. So we're gonna do a partial Delaware 1031 and a partial deferred sales trust, okay? So it's this is where you always wanna really clarify what you're trying to accomplish and then find out the tool that helps you best. The deferred sales trust, cannot solve for mortgage over basis. Therefore, we're not using a deferred sales trust. We're using a Delaware 1031, um, Delaware statutory trust, okay? So um, the particular deal is important to understand this as well. <laughs> um, this particular deal was an Amazon warehouse in Ohio, very large facility, and it had 82% leverage debt, meaning if he puts 18% down, you're gonna get basically 82% in debt. So remember, his his goal was eight hundred thousand dollars approximately of debt replacement, which required about eighteen percent, which is about one hundred and forty four thousand dollars as a down payment, which is neat, right? Because he's otherwise, what would have happened? Well, this eight hundred thousand dollars would have been hit with not only capital gains tax and depreciation recapture, but it's also considered ordinary income. So we're talking, you know, not only thirty, forty, potentially fifty percent. It's as if he made eight hundred thousand dollars if he doesn't replace that debt. And so the ROI was pretty simple. Allow 144,000 of your equity to go into this Delaware to replace that debt versus having $800,000 on your personal income side and paying probably 40 or 50%, right? So it's basically 144 divided by 400,000. So his ROI was really good. So I'm gonna pause there, Jake, and, and, and um, make sure that you're following, you're tracking, and, and, and just any thoughts on that particular part of the transaction. You know, it's, it's, it's very amazing, <clears throat> the conversations that we have with these people. Um, let me go ahead and see. Yeah, if you need to jump out of the clubhouse because of the... Uh, the, the There we go. Yeah. So, I still have the echo, don't I? Uh, you, you sound fine. Depends on where your, where your microphone's going and at, but... Um, okay. But as yeah. long as I sound fine, then I'll just keep going. But yeah, I was just commenting on how... A lot of times people look at ROI and they're comparing ROI, but they forgot about, or they're not included into the formula, uh, tax advantage wealth management type of ROI in the sense of how much am I saving on taxes and how, how can I utilize dollars that I otherwise give to the government moving forward. So present, present value of your current dollars, uh, gross of paying tax, through strategies like the deferred sales trust where it's not a taxable event it's more of a rollover or a deferred type vehicle in the sense that you get to use net of fees of the program etc 100 percent of your transaction towards future investments 
And so your true ROI is on a bigger pie, so to speak, because it's not being cut up and divvied out to, you know, Uncle Sam. And depending on your state, I'm from Utah, so Aunt Utah, so to speak, and all the other taxing agencies. Um, you get to use the the bulk majority of everything that you receive because of your success, whether that's success in crypto, success in your business interests, success in, in uh, some other type of market where you had a large capital gain type scenario, you can then take those proceeds, move them forward completely into more ventures, arm's length from yourself in the name of this trust and your ROI becomes a completely different number. So if we're looking at after-tax gains in like a life insurance policy, we're looking at reinvesting funds in your brokerage account. It's a completely different story than, hey, by the way, we get to not only use net of taxes, but we get to use um, gross proceeds to move forward. Our, our taxable rate of return becomes more like a 37 to 50 something percent ratio before we take into respect um, investable gains. And yep. so I, I don't know if I made that very complicate, complicated or not, but it's, it's, it's definitely something to consider going forward for a lot of our listeners. It's a paradigm shift to consider what you can do with the entire piece of the pie before it's divvied up. Yep. No, very well said. And, and, and to keep the simple math too, to even break that down, 144,000 divided by 400,000, which is what he would have paid in tax if he did nothing is about a 36% return just day one. Right? So it's like, um, Mr. Seller, you can do nothing and pay 400,000 of tax on your ordinary tax return. Right. Or put 144,000 into this Delaware statutory trust. And that stops that 400 from being paid because you replace the debt over basis. You solve for that challenge. So that was a part one of the Delaware statutory trust. By the way, you can go to my YouTube channel, capitalgainstaxlogist.com. You can search Delaware statutory trust versus deferred sales trust, and you can get even more of a breakdown of the pros and cons of both strategies and, um, and then why you would use the deferred sales trust, which is the second part of the transaction. He wants to maximize the amount of equity to use for future real estate deals. He's in the business of buying and owning real estate, right? And he's not in the business of, of having money that's off into a Delaware that's out of his control, illiquid, and um, completely passive. He's in the active side of things. Among other things with the Delaware, that can be a challenge. However, for the mortgage over basis, it is hands down the, the biggest no-brainer to do for, for these type of scenarios, okay? Um, but for the rest of it, he wants to go buy more deals and do more deals. So he's going to defer the rest of the proceeds. So he's going to put about 144000 into the one. And there's going to be about 450 or so left over. And that's going to go into the deferred sales trust, of which he's going to defer some around 30 to 50% of what that would have been. right? So again, he's got a bigger pie like Jake is talking about. But he's got two, 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 two segments. Delaware statutory trust. okay. And I know these are confusing because they're both DSTs, right? But think of Delaware as a 1031. It's, just, it's a Hollywood video to the blockbuster way of 1031-ing, whereas the Deferred Sales Trust is Netflix, separate tax codes. Deferred Sales Trust is not a 1031. Delaware is a 1031. But both have their purpose and their value. And the key is making sure you understand the options so that to solve for the challenge you're looking at. Um, Pierce, any thoughts on that? Yeah, just a quick question. So what? why would you do a Delaware over just a traditional 1031. So besides the mortgage over basis, which we just touched on, right? Oh, over traditional 1031, okay. Yeah, yeah so let's take away the deferred sales trust out for a second. So you would do a Delaware over traditional 1031 if you want it no more toilets, trash, liability of your own actively, right? So in a 1031, I'm selling my rental property, like, you know, 10 units and I'm buying 20 units, right? And I had a client and I asked him that exact question. I said, hey, why don't you just do a 1031 versus a deferred sales trust or even a Delaware? He's like, well, you know what, Brett? I didn't want to trade 18 problems. This is in South Sacramento for 36 problems, right? I made my wealth. I'm done with it. And so someone would do a Delaware because they don't want to trade actively 18 problems of their own for 36 problems of their own. Instead, they can trade 18 problems on their own and give those problems to somebody else. This big corporation that are wonderful people, very sophisticated, very smart, charge hard, high fees for it, by the way. But you would do it because you want to be 100% in real estate. You want to give up all liquidity, all diversification, and you want to just give up all control to this big corporation. I call it like sleepy, sleepy real estate money. 
right? Where you're so just want real estate, but you don't want to do it on your own. And you just want to get a mailbox money and it's just going to show up, right? Sounds like so, a mutual fund or a REIT. Ex exactly the way to think about it. Except if these are actual private deals. Or I'd say they're more like uh, corporation deals, like individual deals. Maybe like one, two or three properties, you know, whereas a REIT might be like 500 properties, right? And you, it's traded on the New York Stock Exchange and it's subject to those influxes. This right. is more standalone by itself because they're individual deals. But yeah, that's that's more why you would use a Delaware versus a traditional 1031. Gotcha. All right. So we also have Mike and we also have Yanni and you're welcome to unmute and or um, type a question in the chat and we are happy to answer that. Um, but no worries. If not, you don't, you, you can just keep listening, which is totally cool. Um, so that is the deal close story of the week. Um, now let's shift into the cryptocurrency update. Okay. So like I was saying before, uh, last week, you can go back and see that we officially have closed uh, the first deferred sales trust in history of a cryptocurrency. The coin actually transferred. It was Ethereum. It transferred. We we went through a whole 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 series the last seven or eight weeks of how to even get there. That was monumental, but it was a small amount. And it was a small amount because the client is waiting for certain numbers to hit. Um, in fact, now Ethereum's up to 2879 as of right now. And we're recording this on 8621. And it's kind of wild, right? Because it's been a wild ride over the past three months, down 17%. But over the past year, up 615%. The past month, up 23%. Past week, uh, or past day, about 3.4%. So you're seeing this uh, maybe increase here on certain coins, in particular Ethereum. And so for this particular client, this the, now the next part of this is now that we know the pipes are flowing, money's moved, everything's approved, now it's just executing the trade. And so we were texting back, back and forth yesterday and it was, okay, yes, I have my number in mind, I have my target rate, a um, uh, uh, value of coin, we gotta be able to execute this, right? And so what we're doing is we're doing live Zoom screen shares private screen shares, right? Now I say live, I mean, I mean, we're private. We're not <laughs> showing the world this, but um, together, you know, we're doing a screen share and then he's executing the trade and then we're seeing it come in, right? Now everything is, we have Google Authenticator, right? Everything is two factor authentication. It's not just, not just the cell phone text message, because by the way, there's a thing called a SIM card swap that can happen. And if that happens, people can steal a lot of information, which by the way, has got me reassessing all of my banking, all of my major logins with using Google authentication, which is another layer of, of extra security. So that's what we're using. So we both go in and that's also for executing the trades, right? Ex not only logging in, but also executing the trades. We have to use these codes. Okay. So once it hits the number, he's planning on moving a big amount and I'm hoping to have a report back to everybody here in the near future about that and then bring him on the show to just share his entire story with everybody again to try to demystify this and make it very real for everyone so that being said jake any thoughts or questions on that you know it's an interesting thing um there's a lot of different ways to get assets into a deferred sales trust but to have them directly named in their wallet so to speak in the name of the trust it is kind of a, a wonderful thing. We've talked about it in times past, but I think it's worth reiterating here the fact that, um, you know, these institutions, Kraken and a few others, Gemini, you know, have taken a look at what the Deferred Sales Trust is. Their legal team have considered it and they're willing to open up accounts in the name of the Deferred Sales Trust itself. So they recognize it as an entity. And, um, you know, well, why is that so important? I mean, why not just do it in an LLC? Why not just do it in any other entity? It decreases the number of transactions the IRS would have to look into if they were to consider whether or not to disallow a transaction like what we're doing. And so it just makes things clearer. Um, it provides a more direct breadcrumb trail, so to speak. And I think that's that's ideal. Uh, of course, everything else that, that you've mentioned, Brad, about the technology and about everything else, all of this is us sharing useful information um, that came out of the success of other clients of ours. And that's why we're here today, is to share not only tax advantage wealth management information, not, not only the deferred sales trust, but the path that other clients have taken to become su become successful and, and share that with, with everybody here in the, in the forum, in the group, and any, anybody and everybody that's going to watch this afterwards.
Well said. Yep. So that is uh, that is a crypto co- uh, crypto update and uh, cryptocurrency update, as well as the deal store update. And then, as a reminder, invite friends, family, clients, whoever's listening to this. Everyone's invited. It's totally free. It's every Friday at 10 a.m. PST. We're going to be um, talking deferred sales trust, cryptocurrency, real estate, financial uh, instruments that you can invest the funds into, such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds. And um, that is um, open to everybody. So you can go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com also to to register for free to get the invite. That's capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. I also want to um, also uh, invite or, or kind of introduce or reintroduce Pierce, who's going to at a short time period, he's going to be running, help run the podcast and help interview. And he's been working and we're together as well with EXP. We're in the, we're uh, uh, commercial real estate uh, professionals as well. And we sell real estate and help people with the deferred sales trust. Pierce, for those who uh, don't know you, would you give them a little bit about your background, your current focus um, on what you'd be focusing on with the deferred sales trust as it pertains to real estate? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I've been uh, working with Brett for the last five years on the on the deferred sales trust and just learning all of the uh, the ins and outs. Still got a lot more to go, but uh, have a really good handle on um, on the DST and how that works. And learning now how they um, how it integrates with other things like charitable remainder trusts and Delaware trusts and and how to just put them all together to to just come up with a powerhouse plan that you just can't beat. Um, so super excited for that. Uh, right now, uh, we are currently in the process of, of doing uh, luxury real estate deals down here in Newport Beach. So that's kind of the primary focus using and leveraging the deferred sales trust to get some of these high end primary homeowners to uh, potentially sell with the, uh, with the option to use the DST so they don't have to pay those uh, nasty capital gains tax. Uh, with that comes, you know, all the high net worth individuals down here who have businesses, crypto stocks, uh, whatever it may be. So just other avenues for them to, uh, to use this and just get value from us. And so we're super excited to start this venture and, and get that rolling. And, um, just real excited, uh, 10 AM conference call here interrupted my calls. So can't wait to get back out there and start pounding the phones again. Absolutely. Thanks Pierce. Yeah. Excited to have you on the team with capital gains tax solutions and also help, help, um, uh, fill in with the podcast interviews and building the content for all things deferred sales trust. By the way, me, Jake, and Pierce will be in Dallas here in a week and a half, hanging out at the, at the um, EXP um, uh, event with Tony Robbins as, as the kind of the, the highlight uh, speaker at the end, doing real estate training, talking deferred sales trust. We might even do some lives over there together. I'm um, setting up multiple microphones, guys, so we might do this in person. Um, uh, that's a uh, that's a that's in a week and a half. So, anyways, that is kind of the latest, Jake. For those who want to get in touch with you. What's the best place for them to find you? So we have a new website. Um, you can go to alphamark.com. That's A-L-P-H-A-M-A-R-K.com. Alphamark.com, as well as 1-800-773-1848. My email address is jake, J-A-K-E. First letter of my last name, M. So Jake M at alphamark.com. Amazing. Thanks, Jake. And again, us, uh, us as in... Pierce and I, but we're all a team here with Jake as well. And in fact, you'll see Jake on my front page because uh, we're business partners as well. CapitalGainsTaxSolutions.com. You can see that link to register for the mastermind as well as if you see or hear uh, when you contact us, just mention this, that you found us here. So we know um, we know uh, where to, where to uh, give credit where credit's due. So that being said, uh, Pierce, for those who want to get in touch with you and anything Newport Beach wise, where's the best place for them to find you? Yeah, so you guys can uh, reach me at uh, 949-763-4243. You can also reach me at Pearson, P-I-E-R-C-E-S-O-N dot York, Y-O-R-K, at E-X-P Realty dot com. Perfect. And uh, yeah, I'd love to chat with you. Excellent. Well, thanks everyone. Thanks, uh, Mike and Yanni, for uh, for for peeking in here. We appreciate you coming. Come next week. Bring a friend, Jake so Brad, and if Pierce. You, if if you have two more minutes, I know we're winding down, but uh, Mike sent me a question. Oh, sure, yeah. Do we have, do we have time for a question? We do absolutely. If we have questions, we'll answer. <clears throat> he says he's got a client 
with uh, around $30 million of commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. That the client is most concerned about estate planning. Okay. That some, some of the real estate, they're in the process of trying to find different ways to hand it off to the kids in the next generation. Mm -hmm. how, how would a deferred sales trust address that issue as well as the tax issue, he asks. Absolutely. So let's start with the big elephant in the room. I like to call this the estate or the death tax, okay? And, and, it's, and it's staggering to think about this, but the largest amount of wealth transfer in the history of the planet is happening right now. It's the baby boomers, which is probably Mike's client. And over the next 20 years, 17 to 20 trillion will pass. And, and the 50% of this is tied to high-end primary homes and commercial real estate and private equity and businesses. So that's about 50% of the total net worth of America. So this particular gentleman has 30 million. I'm not sure if he's married or single, but let's just assume he's married right now. That means 22 million of the 30 would not be subject to capital gains tax because of what's called the exemption. But 8 million of the 30 would be subject to a 40% debt tax if all 30 million is inside of his taxable estate. So estate planning, the first big elephant is how do we get as much outside the taxable estate, totally legally, right, before you pass, to be able to eliminate this 40% debt tax, which I call the big elephant in the room. A lot of capital gains tax solutions, part of it is getting the tiger by the tail, which is capital gains tax. But the big elephant is just, especially for ultra high net worth clients like that, Mike, is this elephant of 40%. So number one is how do we get it outside the taxable estate before they pass? Number two is being willing to look at or being aware of the exemptions, which if he's single, 12 million would not be subject to capital gains tax, right? So he'd get exemption there. If, if uh, he's married, 22 is exempt. However, Biden is proposing to take that and cut it in half, if not even lower, okay? So really, first thing is just to find the problem. Make sure they truly understand what, it, what they're subject to on that death tax, right? So start there, and when the pain gets big enough, right, the why and the how gets pretty easy. And it's like Mike Tyson says, right? Everyone has a plan until they get hit in the, hit in the mouth, right? Hit in the nose. <laughs> and so everyone's a skeptic of the deferred sales trust and what it can do until they're about to get just slammed in, slammed in the nose with this, again, the 40%. So make sure they really understand that. It's the first thing you wanna do. And then number two, just talk about a potential solution, which, I mean, it is a solution, but for them, help them understand the possibility that in one sale, let's imagine it was a $30 million asset, they could sell it and move it all outside the taxable estate. Okay, one deal, one day. It takes a sale, it's not just like a transfer, which your clients might be doing something like a family limited partnership or trying to gift this stuff, right? But they're running out of gift exemptions, they're running out of time, so the intent is to get it outside the taxable estate. The challenge is that they can't get it out fast enough, and the solution without having to give it all the way to charity or buy a bunch of life insurance is what's called the Deferred Sales Trust Plus. No matter what the size of deal, it could be a billion dollar deal. Upon the sale, it takes a sale, it takes a real buyer, fair market value, all of the net proceeds can go into what's called a Deferred Sales Trust Plus. In fact, I just helped the client close one of these. In Colorado, there were 25 million, all real estate, all inside the taxable estate. They sold a $5 million apartment complex and all of that was moved outside the taxable estate save which will save them 40 percent here's the other cool thing too they're pretty young i mean they're in their 50s this particular client the growth outside the taxable estate is also outside so they might have 30 today and let's just imagine they're 60 years old well this could easily double to 60 in another 10 years or 70 right 80 million dollars so it's not only just the roi of of getting it out today but it's all of the growth from now on so jake any questions or thoughts on that no, I think that's very helpful. Um, I just have one follow-up question from Mike on that. Um, <clears throat> as far as moving the assets into the Deferred Sales Trust, can various members of a family, even though they might be different, some might be father, some might be son, and I think we've answered this for another client in the past, but Mike is asking, hey, can the kids and the father all put properties into the Deferred Sales Trust prior to the sale of the properties? So it would be, well, technically it is prior to, but it's at the close of escrow, right? So it's a simultaneous close. So there's three parties, right? And, and there's a buyer, there's a seller, there's the trust. And the trust only transacts when the buyer's ready to perform. And you also, you don't pay anything 
unless it performs. So technically, yes, it does sell to this trust for it sells to the ultimate buyer. Um, but it's not something where you would say, hey, let's just throw this stuff into the trust and maybe we'll sell it in six months or a year. The trust is not in the business and we're not in the business of owning your guys' real estate, right? And, and who knows? So, so we're, we're going to do everything like a, it's called a New York Minute. We're going to close simultaneously, okay? It's an assignment of your, 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 your ownership, okay, your LLC, whatever it might be. And let me also touch on that other part of that question. So if there's multiple partners, each family unit would have their own trust. So let's say it's $30 million worth of assets. We'll just keep it simple. Everyone owns 10 million worth, okay? So we would set up each family unit, meaning like married couple, son, daughter, you know, if a son and, and their spouse, and then let's say a daughter and their spouse, and then a dad and mom, let's say there's three groups, right? Even though it's all one, they're all one big family, it's actually each family unit, I guess is a better way to put it. So each of them would have their own deferred sales trust plus, of which 10 million would go into one, 10 million to the other, 10 million to the third one, separate trust, not commingled based upon each of their individual family units, not the greater family units. So does that answer the question, Jake? It does, yeah. I think that it was largely around the taxing household. If being related, they could participate in the same DST, but in reality, it should be based on their taxing household, right? Yeah, exactly. So the same structure, but separate trusts with its own EIN. Like, so again, if they're single, they'd have their own. Then a brother or sister would have their own separate trust, brand new name, brand new trust, separate EIN, right? We don't put like, and there's lots of reasons for this, but we wouldn't put, you know, 20 family members into one trust. We'd have each individual or family unit into each trust. And that's just the way we've always done it to keep it very, very clear, consistent, and and better for everybody, if that makes sense. I think it does. I think that answers Mike's question. If he, if he has more, I'll, I'll make him ask him the, himself since he's on the call. Yeah, and I'll just touch too. When it passes inside of the living trust to the kids, and you say, well, I have multiple kids. Like, I'm trying to plan for a future. Well, that's cool. Then you can have the payments scheduled to go out to those kids in proportion to how you want to set it up inside of your living trust. Because that might be the part of his question. Like, well, we have like you know, five of us now, and then there's another like, you know, 20, 20 kids have all spread across. Well, each individual trust can be put inside of a living trust of which those kids can be um, the ones that get the benefit of that. So um, yeah, every circumstance is, is particular. We want to, we want to customize it for each particular group. So I would say, Mike, bring your client on no cost, no obligation consultation call with me and Jake and the tax attorneys and we'll, we'll, we'll figure out if it's a good fit. I think you will do that. Well, I, th I think we've already given oh, our Mike, you're there. Yeah. You have a question, Mike, you're, you're unmuted. Go ahead. No, that was great. That, that really helped a lot. Thank you. Cool. And where are you calling from, Mike? I'm in Salt Lake city. Oh, okay, cool. Utah, hey. Another Utah guy. All right. And what's your profession? Just so I understand too. I, um, do a little bit of, uh, uh advising with uh, uh mike actually mike actually works for me brett he's oh, okay, the uh, president got it. I'm with you now yeah he's the president of alpha mark and he's been texting me questions about a new client that we brought on that's great yeah. fantastic mike well welcome 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 and glad to have you and, and uh yeah those are, those are really good questions any other questions we can answer for you right now nope we're good thank I, you I'd, I'd also just throw out as a better introduction to Mike is that he uh, worked for <clears throat> Mike. Why don't you tell us who you used to work for? So I used to work for a company that trained financial advisors on how to run their business better, better marketing, better internal processes, and work with 800 or so financial advisors, just helping them grow their business and become more profitable. Um, it was fantastic. A lot of, uh, processes and procedures work, a lot of marketing and, and those types of things to just uh, become more more efficient and serve their clients better. Fantastic. Mike, you got any friends so, in Newport Beach? <laughs> so he's, like he's very interested in yeah. the Deferred Sales Trust and what it can mean for a lot of his clients and a lot of his past connections, advisors across the country. He was the number one mentor coach for, uh, for Build Good Marketing. Wow. And uh, yeah. anyway, he's, he's excited to see what this could really mean for a lot of our new clients that we're bringing on. Yeah, that's fantastic. And what Pierce was referring to too, Mike, is uh, we're looking to 
to connect with local financial advisors for peers in Newport Beach, right? Because one of the best things is lo lo local, right? Local. Right. So if um, if you have any contacts there, I'll let, I'll let you guys talk offline. So Sounds great. Cool. All right, guys. Well, and, and uh, Yanni and Pierce and Jake, I, again, thank you so much for being here today. And um, let's uh, let's keep this thing going. Let's bring invite some friends, family, clients, partners, whoever, so they can learn more about the Deferred Sales Trust and you know, talk about cryptocurrency. And most of all, escape feeling trapped by capital gains tax. Um, and you can go to capitalgainstaxlessness.com. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Good. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, everyone.